when you blue ball in the bottom of Dr. Pepper. That's it. <coughs> mm-hmm. That's it. Right. Let's <coughs> both try not to die. That's it. Mm. Alright, you ready? Yeah, Beam me up, Scott. <coughs>Hi guys, welcome to Rufio, it's Joe here. We've got Robbie L back yeah, boy. for another profile. Uh, he's done this for us before. It was a slightly different list, but wanted to get something cool yeah. and a new change. Ready for the new format. And uh, yeah, just to see how he got on. He played it at Locals today. Yeah. Um, how did you feel it went? Um, round one and two went really good. And then round three and four, the deck just decided to hate me. Yeah, I just I just opened basically all Inferno monsters. So Two to clarify, ones. guys, Chan figured out already by the title, by the thumbnail, by what he's just said, and by what is here, and by what is here. I it suppose it's a bad shot. Is Inferno okay? Cool. Anything you want to say about the deck before we get stuck in? Um, yeah, like the weird thing is, I played this deck for so long now, but I've never been able to settle on a list that I actually really enjoy and really like because mm -hmm. I always feel like there's it's not optimized well enough. Like I can't focus it in on one thing well enough like i'll build decks for going second turbo and out void imagination and i just won't be happy with it i'll build it first with lair and i just won't be happy with it i put sub terrors in it and it's all right but i won't be happy with it i put evil eye in it and i'm like not really happy with it um but i've like finally actually made a list that is consistent enough and i enjoy enough that i'm actually happy with it and don't feel i need to make any changes yeah so that's one of the big issues right is the, the, the lack of consistency with the deck yeah. i mean it's, it's the same problem i guess any rogue deck it's just inherently bricky and yeah. it makes it hard all right cool well uh, let's take a look at what you're running and then i'm sure you can talk us through yeah. it as we go through so we shall take a look yeah it's 41 cards because i was playing at 40 and i'll explain why i had the 41st card and what the 31st, 41st card is mm -hmm. um but yeah i'll start with the inferno monsters so we got three of the, the good one which is decatron like, this is just, it's the best, it's the only normal summon in the deck, and it's it's Foolish Burial on the summon, and then you copy the effect, level, and name of the monster it sends. Yep. So, it can become anything in the deck. It's like, it's a mini toolbox. Yep. Um, it's really good to open, like, because you can normal summon it, send a monster in the gate, and then you protect it from hand traps. Mm -hmm. But if you open multiples of it, then it is awful, because then your Void Feast is compromised. Yep. Um, so yeah, then there's the other Inferno, you've got two of each of the big ones, so two Ananku and two Deviati. Yeah. This is your Spell and Trap Negate, this is your Monster Negate, this one is Dark Hole on Summon, this one is Heavy Storm on Summon. Right. So they're utterly ridiculous, but you don't want to open them, because you only really want to copy their effects with this, mm -hmm. or summon them once you resolve Void Imagination. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're just... They're amazing, but they're bricks. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> it's always the way with the good cards, isn't it? There's always like a drawback. Yeah. There's always something that makes them not so good. Yeah, and then the, the other Infernoids, I've got one Harmadick, one Petrulia. Mm -hmm. These can be summoned from hand, so they're good in that respect because they're not completely bricks. Um, this one can pop a monster. This one can pop a spell or trap. So like this one's really good at getting through floodgates. Like today, I summoned this after searching for Void Feast with mm -hmm. management. And... Um, there can only be one got flipped on me, so I was just like, cool, just pop it, doesn't matter. Like, you can just out your floodgates with it, it's really useful. Yep. And this, again, can bait the gates by just trying to destroy monsters. Um, you don't want to play more than one of each of these, though, because, again, they're not particularly great to open if you have to banish another card in hand, because mm -hmm. then you're just negging yourself. Yep. Uh, then we've got one of the level eight, Atondale, two of the level seven, so like Samus, and one of the level six, so yeah. This is the 41st card, it's the second side Samus. Because, mm -hmm. first of all, it's just an amazing card. Like, Because if it destroys a monster by battle, then at the end of the battle phase, it will non-target banish a card on the field. Yep. So it's really useful. But another thing I found is, because I'm just trying to turbo out Void Feast as often as possible with this, if you open this, then you want to summon this with a Decatron. But... You, I want to maximise the number of different ways I can summon monsters off a Void Feast. So, like, yeah. two of these plus a Decatron is a Void Feast. That and two of them is a Void Feast. 
one of each of these and a Decatron is a Void Feast. So have been able to go something two of these if either I have another monster on the board for whatever reason, or if I open this, then is really good. So just gives you more ways to get. It gives there. me more ways to get to the Void Feast. So. Yeah. And that's that's it for the Infernoids. Okay, cool. That's I believe it's twelve and like yeah. That's that's the reason why I lost round three today and almost lost round four. Mm -hmm. It's just because I opened three of these. <laughs> so it's always going to be the way. Though, effectively isn't it? starting with a two card hand is never great, especially when one of those other cards you open is Gamma. Ah. Like this card is amazing and it's saved me so many times today, but I only seem to open it with the bad hands, which is quite funny. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you need your vanishments to go through. You need your void feasts to go through. Mm -hmm. So just any way that you can stop hand traps is really good. And like not many people are playing Gamma at the moment, so no one's playing around it. Yeah, that's which, true. Which is why it's good. Like if people expect to play around it, it's nowhere near as good. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it for the monsters. I don't know how many it is. It's what, 16, I think. Yeah. Not many. So, sounds about right. Yeah. Um, so Void Spell and Traps, we've got free banishment. Yep. This is the Searcher, discard a card, search for another one. And more importantly than that, the effect that everyone forgets, if this is still on board... After resolving feast, if your opponent goes to attack over a Decatron, you can send this to the grave and it will banish the opponent's monster in the Decatron. Oh, okay, like cool. If they, if they commit their normal summon to just crashing over the Decatron, then that's it. They've lost that, and that's through like, not reading trouble. cards, they can lose the game. Just from <laughs> Who that. reads cards, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got three imagination. This card is ridiculous. It's Shadow Fusion. Yep. Um, and it makes all your Infernoids level 1 when it's actually on the board as it's continuous spell. Okay. So it means you can just swarm the board. So I'd say, because you've got like a limit, right? You can only have You can to... only summon an Inferno monster if the total level of all monsters you control, effect monsters you control, is 8 or less. Okay, sure. Um, so yeah, this just makes everything level 1, which it came up twice today. It's never happened to me before, but it came up twice today. I had to summon both an Nunku and a Deviati from the grave with this on board because both copies of these were in the grave and I needed to fusion summon. Mm -hmm. So I put that on the board, made these both level one, summoned them both, and I had to send them for the fusion summon. Cool. Which I'd never done that before in a year and a half, but it happened twice today. But there you go. It's quite funny. Um, then I'm playing, I wasn't playing this before, but one void expansion, which is the field spell. Okay. Um, what it does is it's actually kind of terrible on its own, but it has like some really niche uses is during my standby phase, it was summoning a level one Infernoid token. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to summon Infernoids by banishing monsters you control, as well as ones in your hand and grave. Right. So it just, it gives you free fodder if you're in a grind game. Um, and its other effect is that you can only target Infernoid monsters with the highest level for attacks and with card effects. Mm -hmm. So if you resolve Void Feast and like you can't get to Lair of Darkness for some reason, you can just go Metaverse into this. And they can only target the level 6 or 2400 attack with card effects or by battle. Right. So it protects them from just going normal summon, crash over the Decatron. Okay. So it's like another thing that protects you in the gates. So yeah. It's actually been surprisingly useful. And also, if you open Metaverse Void Feast, it means you've got a live Void Feast because you can search for this. Nice. So it's just improving the consistency even more. Um, talking of Lair of Darkness, two copies because it's a brick. And I would cut it to one, but I, I don't know. I don't feel confident the thing is if one. people work out that that's going to be like one of your most important they're going to pop it like yeah they're going to try and get rid of it yeah and it, it is still a ridiculously abusable card like yeah. earlier today i was playing cyber dragons and he went he special summoned a he went a discard a card special summon galaxy soldier um and then normal summon cyber dragon core and try to resolve the effect of cyber dragon core i was just like cool i'm going to tribute the galaxy soldier and negate and banish your core and that's just a lot of it, the swinging advantage that it gives you is ridiculous. For what it's worth, I think we it's actually recorded that match, right? I, th I think uh, we recorded it. I think we did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one. Was so if we did, that'll be up on the channel. Yeah. Maybe soon that's, after this, maybe a little bit before. Who knows? Soon. Yeah. I don't have many infinite matches, so you can just look it up. You'll find it. Yeah, like I, you'll see. Game one, I did awful. I just bricked. And lost. <laughs> but game two and three were ridiculously good. Cool. Um, then next is the only draw spell that Infernoids can play. Yep. Pot of extravagance. This card is pot of greed. Like, it's simple as that. Extra deck really doesn't matter that much, right? No. Extra deck, you'll see this when I go through the extra deck. The extra deck does not matter. The only card you need is Tierra. Yep. So as long as you've got one Tierra in your extra deck, you're good. So, um, like, if you open this in Gamma, it's amazing. Because you can just go, yeah, cool, I'm going to get my draws and I'm going to Omega you for another card as well. Mm -hmm. So, it's pretty insane. Um, 
I'm playing Call by the Grave as well as Gamma because, again, I just these things need to resolve. Like, if I wanted to be a man, I could probably cut one of the two and put more more cards in, like put Lilith or something like that in. I know, man. Like, Call by the Grave but, is, is so strong. And the thing is, it's not even just protection for, like, your own effects. It's making sure, like, yeah. you can interrupt your opponent. Like, if they've got an important graveyard effect, you can just yeah. take care of like, it. And... It's really good against Sky Striker. It's really good against Salaman Graves. So, yeah, it's worth keeping him. Um, then onto the traps, there are nine traps, which are three of God card. If you resolve two of this in one turn, you always win the game. So I, clarify what that does for us. What this does is you send a void spell or trap card from your hand or field to the grave as cost, and then you summon infernoids from your up to three infernoids from your deck whose total levels equal eight, ignoring summoning conditions. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you, I've never lost a game when I resolve two of these in one turn, like because if you activate the first one. If you've got the second one, you can then send the first one to the gravest cost, so you only really pay the cost once. And right. then you're summoning five monsters from your deck for free. It's pretty good. Putting three negates on board and filling your grave up for next turn when you can summon a Dark Hole and just obliterate your opponent's board. Sounds good. It's it's The card's ridiculous. Um, and three Metaverse, because activating Lair in your opponent's turn is hilarious. Um, and reason this over terraforming is because triple trap trick because this makes feast more consistent and if you've already got the feast you can trap trick into metaverse you're essentially running six copies of either metaverse yeah. or yeah and that's because good. of what i've got in my side as well which you'll see this card is just ridiculous like trap trick is the mvp yeah it's the reason it's so uh, so price is weird to think as well when it first came out nobody was, wanted the I, card i picked up two of these as neat for six pounds each yeah man They're i should have done it really <laughs> yeah it's insane Ah, oh, well, you live and you learn, right? That's yeah, Yugi for yeah, you. Yeah, pretty much. Got no way to pull the trigger sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's it for the main deck. It's 41 cards. Cool. Um, on to the extra deck. Not that much of it matters. We've got, as I say, the important card, which is three Inferno Tierra. Yep. Which um, the only relevant effect of this when you summon it is if you use three names to sub different Inferno names to summon it, which you will, you get to send three of this to the grave. And then pop things. Which then they pop things when they're sent to the grave. And then the other one is if you send five names, you both mill three cards. But like if you're playing something like Salamine Great or Burning Abyss or whatever, you don't really want to load their grave or even Thunder Dragon. Yeah. You just don't want to give them the resources. So mm -hmm. you can. That, the second Sight Semis helps with that as well because you can send two of each of the big ones and two Sight Semis and you're still sending six monsters. Yep. But you're just stopping them from getting the mill. Cool. So yeah. They're like the only important cards in the entire extra deck. And the rest is just generic things so we've got see the omega for the um for the gammas yep um and then the rest are all just generic good links so you've got ball sword and <laughs> or load. in case you can't do enough damage like, in right in case you can't do enough damage and you don't banish them then you can just yeah summon one of these and win for free like those cards are still ridiculous um nightmare phoenix you can also summon this off a of gamma like if you're going second and you resolve it then because you can just pot spell on traps yeah um Heater, because this card is ridiculous. Like, this card is like the next best thing in terms of bolts or OTK. Right. Just stealing monsters off your opponent, and it's effectively a free link material. Mm -hmm. It's just nice, especially if you play Crackdown, because you can crack down an opponent's fire monster, make this, and then summon it back for free, which is just kind of stupid. Um, and then the last four are just two Do Little and two Wind Wee Witches, because if you open Decatron and Void Imagination, then. This is an OTK, and if you have Lair as well, then this is an OTK. Sweet. So yeah, as long as you have basically one of one of these five left off, you've used Extravagance, you're going to be able to OTK your opponent. Sweet. Um, Sounds like a good deal. Yeah, and most of this you literally never use. Like I think I summoned Heater once today, I summoned a Wee Witch once today, and I summoned Tierra twice, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's all I use for the extra deck today. Sweet. In five rounds, that's like once a round I use the extra deck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then the side deck. The side deck's slightly different to what I actually use today, because in here I've got three pancratops, but one of these should be it should be two pancratops and two gamma seal, which is what I used. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I just don't have a second gamma seal because like three pancratops is all well and good, but if you're playing against striker, then you switch them off. Kaiju's are just too good because yeah, you just switch off your opponent's widow anchors. Yep. Um, then I'm playing um, artifact side and two sanctum. Just two? Just two, because I've got Trap Trick, so I'm already running five copies of it. Yeah, I guess. That's true. Um, if I have more space, then I guess I could just cut the Gamma Seal entirely and put the third Sanctum in. Mm -hmm. But I really like the two Pancratops, two Gamma Seal. Yeah. Um, 
And the same with Heavy Storm Duster, because I've got two Trap Trick, it's effectively five dusters. Yeah, you just see it whenever you need it. Yeah, if you hadn't noticed, I have no main deck outs to Mystic Mine. Yeah, so that I could just, be a problem. I need to see these. Yeah. Um, so that's like the Trap Trick targets for going first. Mm -hmm. um, then we've got Triple Impermanence, which is, I guess also counts as a Trap Trick target, but it's yeah. going second. Like, it's the only other hand trap outside of Gamma that I run. Card is so good. It is just amazing. Like... I, at first, I was like, ah, it's not that much better than Vayner. <laughs> Until you start using it, then and then you, you realise. Then you start using it, and you realise just how good it is. Yeah. Um, then the last is, again, for going second against Mystic Mine. It's just Twin Twisters. Yeah. And it's good against other macro decks, but basically just mine. Of which there are many. Yeah, just fuck that card. Sorry about all the noise, guys. Apparently some dickheads outside can't control themselves. So they get yeah. loads of noise in their cars. <laughs> right, so anything you would change about the deck? Um... As I say, I'd possibly consider dropping one of the Gamma or the Call by the Grave, as in one of the sets of them for like Lilith, because that searches more traps, which I might play around with. But apart from that, like I'm so happy with how the list, generally speaking, is consistent, like through all the testing I've done. Well, it's because this is, you'll ever get it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just those two rounds today where randomly I just bricked all of a sudden, which one of them we got on camera. I still won the round. Yeah. Um, because I top deck Void, Imagin Void Imagination in game three. That's why it's all about ripping them sacky cards. It was so sacky. And I just obliterated <laughs> him. I yeah, sometimes so that's what you need to do, right? Yeah, that is what you need to do. Cool. Right. Well, thank you very much for checking in. Yeah. Uh, any shout outs before we go? Um, yeah, shout outs to Mark at Maniscrew for giving us the space to record. Oh, boy. You'll see yeah. the link down in the uh, in the description <laughs> if you want to check him out. Yeah, boy. Um, and shout outs to the Bedford lot. Which is where my normal life was. Bedford in. Boys. Bedford Boys, yeah. Um, and then just shout outs to Rufio. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the sub <laughs> button, that's it. For more lit videos like this. Lit videos. I'm sure that's what people call it, right? Yeah. That's what cool. the kids are saying. Yeah, all the kids are saying. We don't say it here because we're adults, right? Yeah. Wow. Apparently. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's terrible. <laughs> you should feel bad. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much for checking in, guys. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was uh, informative for you. Please do hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to leave comments, all that kind of stuff. Tell me if the deck's bad. Um, yeah. I'll let him know, and then he'll probably argue with you about it. Yeah. On that topic, actually, shout-outs to the Infernoid Underworld on Facebook, always telling me my deck profiles are bad. Uh, cool. So, I'll make sure I send the link into them as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for checking in, guys. I will see you in the next one. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this video. If by chance you haven't had enough of listening to me waffle at you through a video about a children's card game, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are on the screen, or if you're feeling really lazy, you can click the links in the description. While you're at it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content too. It'll make me smile, I promise. And who could ask for more than that? Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.